tap the button on the back. There you go. There we go. Okay. A lot of times there's some young ones still out there, but I think we got them all up here, all two of you. <laughs> Glad you're here. I'm going to tell you a story about my mom. My mom was a surgical nurse. That means she worked in the hospital in the operating room where they cut you open and they fix you all up and sew you back together again. And, and then and she worked day shift, but after day shift they had what they called on-call time. And sometimes those on-call times lasted a long time. If, if you had an emergency, somebody fell off a ladder, car crash, shooting, whatever, you know, she'd have to go in and help the doctors get everybody all fixed up. Well, one day she came up and says, I'm going to visit Dad this weekend. Because it was summertime, I was about 15, my brother 16. And he was going to school at Arizona State University in Tucson. And we lived in San Diego, and she wanted to go visit him. So he went, okay, like this. Well, she worked, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, Wednesday was one of those days where, well, she didn't get home that night. She worked all day long, all night long, clear up until a couple hours before she was supposed to start work on Thursday the next day. And she... They had a cot in the nurse's room, and she slept in that for a couple hours and got and worked all day again. And she didn't get home until 10 o'clock that night. And about 1 in the morning, another car accident. And she went back to work. And she worked until she started working again on Friday. And she was so tired. She worked her day through Friday, finally got off about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And she came home really tired. I, I was still at work, so I, I didn't see her. But she took a quick shower, get some of the hospital smell off of her, got clean clothes, jumped in the car, and headed to Tucson, which is 450 miles. It's a nine-hour drive with almost no sleep. But she prayed before she left. She goes, Lord, please, I'm so, so tired. I just want to go. You know, Get me to Tucson, Arizona. Just get me there. And she drive, and she was driving along, and she was trying to let one eye sleep, and then the other eye sleep, and she's trying to keep her eyes open, and she's stopping the car and running around, just trying to stay awake so she could drive to Tucson. And you know what? She made it without any accidents. Three o'clock in the morning, she rolled into Tucson, and she's going down the street, and she could remember the address, she could remember the directions, she could remember the phone number, and back then, there was no computers, there was no GPS, there was no cell phones. She was just driving around at night, and she thought, well, if I drive around enough, maybe I'll see the street sign and recognize it. But it was dark, and they didn't have the lighting they have nowadays. And so, if she found the street sign on the street, her eyes were so tired, she couldn't, and, be, and it's so dark, she couldn't even read the sign. She was just kind of driving around and through the neighborhoods. And, uh, and then she pulled up to us. A stoplight. She found herself on a main road again. And she stopped at the stoplight. It was red. And she hears this. Like this. And there's a policeman by her window. And he goes this. You know, roll your window down. So she rolls the window down. And, she, and he goes, are you okay, lady? She goes, yeah. And she went, have you been drinking? No. She, I'm really tired, though. She goes, well, why aren't you going? She looks up and goes, the light's red. And he goes, she goes, yeah, but it's turned green about eight times. <laughs> you don't go. And he goes, are you sure you haven't been drinking? And she goes, yeah, I, I have a drink. I'm just tired. She says, pull over the side. So she pulled over and he pulled over behind her and she walks up and he goes, where are you trying to go? And she goes, Tucson. And all she could remember is that the house my dad is renting a room in had a red door. So she goes, I'm trying to find a house with a red door. And he goes, huh? Well, what's the address? I don't know. It has a red door. And she goes, well, what's the phone number? Maybe I can put a call through to it. And get some, you know, help you. And she goes, 
the house has a red door. Can you take me to the house with the red door? And the officer looks at her and goes, ah. Oh. She goes, red door? She goes, that's a fad. He says, it's by 5,000 houses all over Tucson. They have houses with red doors. It's 3.30 in the morning. He says, it's dark. You're not going to find a red door. You need some sleep. And she goes, but where can I stop? It's safe. And he goes, well, he goes, there's a hotel just behind us there. He goes, no, nah. she goes, I don't want a hotel. I just need to, I need, just need to sleep. So he goes, well, you got to get off the main road. He says, don't stop. turn at this next street. Go to the next street. Turn right. He says, you go three, four, or five blocks. You'll finally get away from all the cars parked along the street. And then there'll be some on-street parking. Just pull over in front of one of the houses. And, and she goes, is that safe? And he goes, I'll call into the office, and we'll, he says, I'll, I'll run my patrol through here, and when I'm off duty, I'll run another patrol here to make sure you're safe. So she drove down, you know, she's driving along, and sure enough, cars, 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 cars. And it was dark, she knew she didn't want to parallel park in there where there's some gaps, so she finally got up to where there's a big area in there where there's no cars, and she pulled up in front of a house, tried not to block a driveway, and turned the car off, locked the doors, climbed in the back seat, and went to sleep. She figured just an hour or two, you know. Well, she woke up with the sun on her face. Her, she was cold and the sun felt good and it was, and it was daylight already. And she was, oh wow. She was, she was cold and she was stiff, but she felt pretty rested. She felt good. And she, she unlocks the door, she gets out, she stretches. Oh man, oh, like this. And then she looks around, she reaches in. She grabs her keys, and grabs her purse, locks the car, and walks up the driveway past my dad's little Morris Minor 1000 car and up to the house with the red door and knocked on the door just in time for breakfast. <laughs> of all the tens of thousands of houses and buildings and stuff, in Tucson, God had taken her right to the house she was looking for. Now, God is, is building us a house, and we've never even been there. We don't even know what color the front door is. <laughs> but you know what? When we go to, and go to heaven and he takes us, he'll take us right to the house that he built for us. And, he, and he's going to say, this is your house. And you know what? It might even have a red door. Amen. 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 You can go back to your seat now.